Hey, hey, everybody. It's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. I'm going to move quickly. So if I go too fast, the links in the description below will probably help you go further. So I have a new logo. I'm thrilled. I'm so happy. Thanks to Extra Hardcore XRP. He did something for me and got it done today. And I just love it. So thank you so much. I will put a link to his Twitter page. If you ever need any design work, he works at a very fair rate. And I think his work is fabulous. Okay, this is to bring you up to date into what's happening with Earthport and Visa. So everybody was very interested when Visa went to acquire Earthport because back in 2014, the real-time remittance deal happened between Earthport and Ripple Labs. So everybody is very curious as to what is happening. If you go to the Ripple website still under, you can see right here on the left left hand side at the corner of the bottom where my cursor is, you can still find that Earthport is listed as one of the customers. Now it is fair to say that we haven't seen any real solid confirmation of their working relationship as of recent, but it still is very important as to what happens with this deal because the fact that they have a working relationship and have worked together in the past, it could open up some very big new business if Visa is truly able to acquire them. So the UK government is actually making an inquiry. They are a little concerned with this deal. They think it'll result in a substantial lessening of competition within the marketplace in the United Kingdom for goods and services. So they're taking a look. It was back on the 3rd of April that they launched the inquiry. And then on the 4th, they invited comments. And it looks like the deadline for the phase one decision is going to be on the 4th of June, 2019. So I will keep you updated on this as I'm watching it carefully. Okay, and then another kind of change happening in Japan. There is a lot of tightening of regulation here, one of which uh, caused Mr. Kitao of SBI to kind of hold off on doing some of the derivatives trading on the SBI VC site because there was regulatory work being tweaked. And Japan is tightening those rules with margin trading, and they have decided on a four-time margin uh, uh, maximum cap because of the interest to protect the retail investor. So the Japanese cabinet has agreed to the financial service uh, agency's positions on all fronts, and they are all in order to get this passed. And I'll tell you where it's at. It's been green lighted. So on the 15th, is when the FSA submitted the bill to the Diet, and it would, of course, strengthen the regulations on the virtual currencies here, and the bill will be passed by the Diet into um, the Act, which is the, the it's, it's, uh, it's an amendment to the Payments Services Act, and it will come into force as early as June 26, 2019. So, all of the preliminary work is done. It's got a green light. We're just now waiting for the date of when it goes into force. And then if you look here, major coming events relating to virtual currency regulations. On June 8th and 9th, there is the G20 meeting of the finance ministers. This is happening before the G20 summit, and they will drill down and get very specific as to what is going to be discussed at the summit in Osaka. And also on June 16th through the 21st, there is an FATF plenary meeting in Orlando, Florida, USA. And so we need to kind of keep those dates in mind because there'll be some uh, information coming out from those meetings. Okay, this is interesting. So just a few hours ago, Bank XRP uploaded a video where Marjan Delatine from Ripple, she's a Ripple employee, previously a Swift employee. So what when she talks, I'm I'm always listening because I think her perspective is very unique. And she did address a lot of great topics for Ripple and XRP, and she actually took 
some Q&A at the end. If you want to listen to it, I'll put the link in the description below. But in pulling out some of those nuggets, uh, she does talk about the comparison of the JP Morgan coin in uh, relationship to XRP. And basically, um, it's no it's no, no surprise that the JPM coin is just another centralized banking solution that is not any different than the correspondent banking that they're doing now. And that should all those banks continue to create their own coins, it just gets more fragmented and it doesn't help the whole industry. Uh, XRP and Ripple is really a beautiful solution for the low value, high frequency corridor, she said, and it helps the midsize services uh, saving them, you know, she quotes 40 to 50% in efficiency in regards to management costs. And the challenges in scaling is to get these legacy companies to go deep in the push of the uh, integration. So she says the pilot phases are over, that we know, and that now people who are paying customers are coming in the way of two to three are signing every week. I just can't wait to see an updated list. So 25 new customers came last quarter and I just I just can't wait to see the new the new list. And the real use case today, she said that they are building liquidity through the exchanges for XRP to increase that volume and that using the different initiatives is really helping build a healthy ecosystem. So when we look at a healthy ecosystem, this is one example that's very interesting. So if you kind of remember back in April of last year, Casino Coin adopted the Ripple code base to further online gambling. And it was on the 3rd of January that the lead developer explained why he chose to build on the Ripple technology. He says that Ripple is, of course, focused on banking and that got their attention. But more importantly, the transaction speed was vastly superior to anything else they could find. And the decentralized relay node model was quite appealing to them and the ability to implement custom coin solutions was big and the onboarding process has proven to be superior now if you take a look they have a very active chat room which i didn't know about so if you are interested in reading what kind of chat is happening around this project here is your um, chat board and it's very current i mean it's within you know uh Within 24 hours, there are postings. And it was just a couple of weeks ago that they brought on a new board advisor. And this is Richard Kama. Kame? Kame. He actually is uh, the leading roulette wheel manufacturer. He really loves this casino coin, and he believes that the... Um, this coin could truly revolutionize the casino floor. So it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's a project that seems to be getting some traction. And if you see here, the 27th of April casino coin price surged more than 200% in a week. Wow. So I'm not telling you to go out and buy this, but I'm just bringing into the light. Here is an example of the XRP ecosystem really working and expanding, which is, uh, you know, just so important to the, to the complete story of what the Ripple, the company and XRP, the digital asset is doing in the space. And I will put a link to the actual Casino Coin website where you can view the minute and 24 second video about Casino Coin and Ripple. I found it very interesting. Okay, I am moving to the fluff, everybody. I am going to stick with gambling because when I moved to Japan, I was so surprised to see that they gamble on bicycle racing here. It's called Kering. And 
it's been around since 1948 and it is a legal form of gambling. Gambling is really controlled big time here in Japan. And they do also some uh, horse racing and you can do boat racing, but the um, bicycle racing is interesting. They use a brakeless fixed gear bicycle. They race on average about 1.5 kilometers, which is just almost a mile. And the racers go across the finish line at about 43 miles per hour. In the 2000 Summer Olympics, this sport debuted in Sydney and you can, see that in Japan, it's popular. There's about $5 billion done every year in the gambling. And just a little trivia, the oldest, most famous uh, bicycle racer was a gentleman who retired at the age of 53. And that happened back in 1981. But what I want to talk about is the girls portion of the racing. Girls were allowed to participate in this gambling sport just recently. It was back in 2012, and they are really promoting this sport in a very interesting way. So the girls are kind of promoted as idols, if you will. And this is one of their current ads. And so I think they are definitely appealing to a certain group of people to come and watch their racing. And there is a foreigner who is racing. Her name is Matilda. And Matilda Gros, I think, is from France, I do believe. And she is just 20 years old as of Friday. You can follow her on Twitter. But she is one of the most popular racers in Japan. How about that? There are, I think, uh, eight different venues that you can see this racing. So if you do come to Japan um, and, and you want to take a look at this for uh, your entertainment, I don't think you'll have a hard time finding um, a race to watch. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.